Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Turning Readers into Writers with me, your host Emma Desi. I hope you're all well. Um, today I wanted to talk about something I know everybody experiences at some stage, particularly the women in my audience um, and even more particularly the mothers of you out there. This is something that, I don't know, it just seems to be inbuilt with us but um, we feel guilty too, too often. And one of the things that we feel guilty about is for wanting to write. Isn't that strange that we feel guilty for wanting to do something fun and that's enjoyable? I don't know what it is about us. Maybe it's our, um, you know, writers being artists, being artistic, perhaps being perceived as more sensitive. I don't know. But there is definitely something about us that we do tend to feel guilty for doing this thing that makes us feel um that makes us feel good and is challenging but is enjoyable at the same time and even when we're not having um you know the easiest writing session or the easiest week with our writing we still know it's important to us we still love it and we still want to to carry on with it but I do know that in the early days, guilt around this can it can cause problems and it can really actually stop you from even getting started in the first place. And um, when I've spoken, as I've spoken to people over the years and I'm um, also thinking back on my own experiences with guilt and writing, it comes in many shapes and forms. And like everything in our lives, it usually comes from from our childhood in some way, shape or form. It's quite frustrating how much of our psyche was kind of formed in those those early years and now it feels so difficult to, to shift it. But you can shift it. It's not necessarily easy, but it's certainly we can shift these feelings of guilt and the way that we see ourselves and what we are allowed and what we deserve in the world we can shift those so that rather than thinking we're not allowed these things and we don't deserve these things, we can shift that mindset into thinking, do you know what? I'm a good person. I deserve to do something I love. I deserve to um, have some enjoyment in my life and some success in my life as well. So these are things that are that you definitely, definitely can shift. But I'm going to focus on three areas that um, I have experienced myself and that other people have told me they where their feelings of guilt come from. So the first one, and this is certainly something that I felt in the early years, definitely when my kids were little and at their most demanding and most needy for everything, not just the emotional support, but even the kind of basics of feeding themselves, getting themselves dressed, all those little things <laughs> that you think would take two minutes, but actually take a long time. Um, I s certainly felt this one and it was that idea of taking time away from our loved ones. A lot of people feel guilty about this and it's not just um, taking time away from, say, you know, a partner who's fit and able and um, has a full life themselves. Still, for some, that there is a dynamic within the relationship um, that, that the person does feel guilty. The writer does feel guilty for wanting to take that time away um, and do something on their own. Um, but it, it's compounded, I think, often if you do have someone that you're caring for, whether that be like I was, I was caring for young children, um, or whether it be that you are caring for a family member or um, your spouse or partner, that you're caring for them. And it can feel very um, indulgent. It can feel selfish to want to take time away from them when we feel that oh, we should be giving you know, all of our energy to that person, all of our time to that person, because aren't we lucky to be in the position that we're in, whether it's to have children at all, or whether it's to not be, uh, not needing to be taken care of in that way, or, you know, that you do have your health. So there's lots of feelings of guilt around that one. And, um, would they, you know, thinking would they do the same? Would they go off and be on their own if the roles were reversed? 
probably telling yourself, no, they wouldn't. Oh my goodness, who am I to do this? This is dreadful. I said I would love this person for the rest of my life. And so the feeling of kind of been wanting to have time away from that person can feel really, really um, inhibiting and can feel very, very, uh, I want to say limiting. Um, it, that the the writer feels limited about the time they can spend away legitimately. It feels like cheating somehow to be taking time away and to be kind of needing that respite. And for some people that respite might be to go for a run, but for us writers often that respite is to go and have quiet time and be able to write. So if that is you, if you are a caregiver in any way, shape or form, I totally hear you on that one that was one of my big uh, bugbears not bugbears but one of my big issues as well thinking that I chose these children I wanted to have these children I should not be desperate to get away from these children but actually 24 7 yeah I needed time away in order to come back and be semi-human again in order to come back and be able to kind of give a little bit more of myself to them and so it's important to have those respite moments away. And for us writers, that is to do our writing. So that is the number one thing I hear from people that they feel feel guilty about it. The second thing that people uh, makes them feel guilty is that they don't feel creative or talented enough to warrant taking this time away, to warrant... Um, wanting to go on a writing retreat for example or wanting to take a Saturday afternoon away from the family to go and spend it on on themselves you know time away on them by themselves to do the writing um and not because they need to look after anybody but because they're doubting that they've got the talent they've got the skills they've got the creativity they don't think that they deserve to be able to go and do this and it might put some pressure on and actually they don't really want to share their work with the people who are outside of their writing sphere and that pressure can make them feel guilty as well because what if you're writing not because you want to um, publish and become the next Jane Austen or whoever but actually you're wanting to write just because you enjoy it just because it gives you a kick just because it's a fun thing for you to do um and so having that kind of saying to people, well, I, I want to go away on Saturday afternoon or I want to go away that long weekend to be able to write and be with other writers, it can feel undeserving and you can feel very unworthy for it if you don't think that you've got enough talent or enough creativity or that you want to make um, a career out of it. And especially if you come from a family or you have the, the majority of your friends are not readers, they're not writers, they're not creatives. And for them, this just feels like really weird. Why on earth would you want to do this? Why, you know, they don't understand the kick that you get out of it. They don't understand the joy that you get out of it. And so um, they, they kind of can, can compound that feeling of guilt of not being enough, of not being talented enough. And if you're not going to be the next Stephen King, then then why would you do it? And I've also heard people say, you know, it feels very boastful to strive for something that's out with the norm because they're thinking, well, who am I to do this? Who am I to try and do this creative venture when no one else I know is doing it? Why am I not happy going to yoga or going to uh, the golf club or um, going for a run? Why am I not content with just going to knitting or going to, um, let's think, what, or to bowling or um, to any of the myriad things that people do of an evening that is social, that does involve spending time with other people and that the majority of other people understand why you want to do it and it's something that they do themselves um you know that can feel that you are you're not but you can feel like you're trying to put yourself above everybody else or stick your head above the parapet or show that you are more cultured or um, more refined than your friends and family around you you know that's not what you're doing you know that that is not your intention it just happens to be 
something you love doing writing just happens to be the thing that fills you up and feeds your soul just as some for some others it is going to the gym it is going to football matches it is sports um it is going to the movies or to the theater with other people it just so happens that for you it's writing that feeds your soul and it's not an attempt to make yourself look or feel any better than anybody else even though you worry that others perceive you that way so I've heard that from others that they've said you know it feels boastful to strive for something out with the norm and if that's you please know that it's not you know please know that it's not boastful to go for something that's out with the norm it's courageous it's courageous to go for something and strive for something that is new and scary and is unknown. That's courage. That's not being boastful. So um, try your best to reframe that in your head and know that you are doing a lovely, gorgeous thing. And if you do ever publish your books and other people do ever read them, you are giving a gift to the world. And that is a beautiful thing to do. So don't let anybody stop you. Least of all you. Don't let you stop you. <laughs> all right. So um, so the f first of the three things was that we can feel guilty for taking time away from our loved ones, particularly those ones that we are caregiving for. The second reason that we feel guilty is that it can feel as if we're trying to make ourselves better than other people when we don't feel we've got the creativity and we're we're worried about what other people are going to think of us. And that they might think that we are being boastful when we're looking to do for something a little bit different rather than being courageous for doing something a little bit different. Um, but the third reason that a lot of people feel guilty for writing comes down to money. Um, like anything, it, you know, writing does involve depending on how far you take it and how seriously you're taking your writing, of course it involves spending money. Of course it does, from simple things like buying a pen and paper for you to write your manuscript on, or buying a laptop or a computer for you to write it on, or if you don't have one at home, maybe you have to go to the library and rent some space. There is a cost involved in that. Um, then if you do take things more seriously and you do you invest in some software like Scrivener or Atticus or Plotter or many of the other ones out there, that takes a bit of money too. If you want to um, find an agent, then you've got, you've got to spend the money on finding an editor and someone who's going to um, look through the book for you and help you make it the best it can be. Um, that's going to cost money too. And of course, if you're an indie author, then you've got all the expenses that come with that. Um, from from the, the editing to the formatting to the book cover design to getting help with your blurbs to the marketing, all of it. There's always something that is going to cost you and that can feel, that can make people feel really, really guilty because it's not seen as something that has a guaranteed return on investment, that there's not a guaranteed payback for it. There's not a guaranteed result at the end of it. You might sp spend a lot of money doing writing classes or um, buying the software that you want and going through the hoops of getting published to find that nobody buys your book or your book doesn't get picked up by an agent. And so there's no guarantee of that. And that can feel very, very repressive that there's, you're, you know, you're thinking about the money that you spent and maybe um, you didn't get what you wanted out of the experience. And so you're feeling guilty about that. Or maybe your partner is, was never fully on board with it in the first place. And now they feel that they've been proven right because your book hasn't sold a million copies and, or you haven't been picked up by the agent. Um, and so there's that feeling of, not just spending money that could be spent elsewhere. That's one part of it. And that can make us feel bad enough. But there's the other part of the spending money. And it's the feeling that we don't deserve to spend that money on ourselves. That we are not worth spending that money on ourselves. Because if we spend 
more than feels comfortable, then maybe we think, oh my goodness, you know, I am unworthy of this. This is too expensive. Um, I should be spending this on my family. I should be spending this on somebody else. How can I justify spending this amount of money on myself? Now, it might be one big chunk of money that you spend uh, in one go, or it might be all those little bits of money that we think aren't very much, but actually add up. And at the end of the year, we realize we've actually spent quite a lot and we don't feel like we've got any further along. And then we feel that we have gone about things the whole wrong way. And we feel that if we were meant to do this, that the money we've spent would have paid off, but clearly we're not. So we're not worthy of this writing. We shouldn't be doing it. Who do we think we are to expect other people to get on board with this? Money is so complex, isn't it? It's not just about an exchange, you know, um, money for goods or services. There's a whole heap of emotion that goes along with it. And this is something that really, really does come from our childhoods and how we've seen people around us be with money, spend money, save money, have money, not have money. So much of this goes on. And unfortunately, I don't know why we do it, but we we do see money as a reflection of our self-worth and our self-value. And if we um, stay within a comfortable amount of spending, then we don't feel like we are um, setting ourselves up for failure, perhaps. And it does tie into the idea of, you know, if you spend too much money on this, then you're being boastful. So it does tie into point number two about why we feel guilty. One is on the creative side about trying to do something out of the norm but then if we want to spend money on it to make it better, to make ourselves better and invest in ourselves then that too feels boastful to be maybe spending some family savings or um, some inheritance or whatever it might be on something like that when maybe you know you feel if you were spending that money on your children you wouldn't feel that level of guilt because you feel that they are worth it intrinsically just by being themselves just by being themselves and wanting that day out at Legoland they deserve it but we don't feel that way about ourselves that just intrinsically being ourselves and we want to write and we want to go on that retreat um oh, we find it so hard to justify. We don't think that we deserve it just for being ourselves and just for having that dream and that desire. So, so complicated. But I would do, so how can I help you kind of reframe that? Um, money is, money is not, money is an infinite resource. Let's start with that. When I first heard this, my the alarm bells in my brain immediately went off and I was like, ding, 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 ding. Uh, yes, it is. What do you mean? It's not an infinite resource. I don't have infinite money. I wish I did. And then I wouldn't have any of these problems. It took me a while to realize that what my coaches were saying to me was that money comes and money goes. You're not given a pot of money at the beginning of your life and told, that's it, you don't get any more, be careful with it, be frugal with it, um, because there's no more where that came from. That's not what happens. Throughout our life, there are um, cycles where we're feeling more um, uh, affluent than at other times. There's times when we're a bit more flush with cash than we are at other times. Um, We all have experienced this. You know, if we think about where we're at right now, I think um, certainly, I think everywhere actually is going through this sort of cost of living um, struggle at the moment where energy prices are high, food's going high, inflation's having an impact on everything. So we're all feeling the pinch a bit here. But there are other times, um, and in fact, I can think back to um, the pandemic, particularly here in the UK, when everything was shut down and people were being furloughed, so they were being paid for staying at home. People were feeling good then. People were feeling, hey, I am getting this money for doing nothing, for being at home. And um, there was definitely a a feeling of, um, 
of affluence at that time. And that was compounded by the fact that you couldn't really go out and do anything. You couldn't spend your money on a holiday or a meal out or or anything that you might normally spend it on. So people were saving a lot more and feeling good about that saving. And so then when things started to open up, they were out and they were spending. And we were like that as well. And I remember, you know, going to the DIY store to try and pick up paint. And I think everybody started doing a bit of um, home decor repair and things. And all those things that we'd ignored around the house suddenly, because we were at home all the time, we were noticing them. And, you know, the shops were just selling out of wood. They were selling out of paint. They were selling out of everything because everybody was feeling kind of affluent. Everybody was feeling that um, they had some spare cash. So you can see then that things are go in circles. And so they had that money and then they spent it. And now we're in this part of the cycle where we don't have as much money, but this will change and it will, we will begin to feel affluent again in whenever it happens. But that's kind of at the macro level, but even at the micro level, for yourselves you know you'll feel it yourself there are months where there's a lot of bills going out but there are months where there's not there are years where there seems to be a lot of expenses um, maybe going on a lot of lovely holidays and so there's a lot of money being spent which means that you need to tighten the belt on other things and so what I learned from my coaches is that there will always be more money you know, whether it be we have the capacity to go out and get a new job, find work and bring in money that way, or that there's friends and family who can help, or there is um, the government who can help. There's always ways of getting around and finding ways through. And of course, as we know, the more we need it, the more inventive and creative we become. So what I want you to do, where I'm going with this is I'm trying to get you to see that spending money on yourself does not mean that you will not have any more money in the future. It might not guarantee, well, it doesn't guarantee that you'll ever have a bestseller. Nobody can guarantee that for you. But it's not about that. When you're investing some money in a course or a writing retreat or um, even a coach, it's not just about um, what you get back in terms of material things like, like the bestseller. It's what you get to put into yourself. It's how you get to grow as an individual. It's what it does for you on the inside. Because I've said this before and I'll say it again. Writing a novel is not just about the words on the page. It is about who you become in the process. And for some of you, you will do that on your own. You will find a way to kind of make that happen on your own. But for the majority of us, we need others around us to help us do that. And that comes in the form of a writing class, a writing group, a critique group, either in person or online. For myself, that comes in the form of my coach. Um, We each have our own way of finding that way of um, up-leveling our skill, yes, but also kind of growing into the writer that we want to be. We're moving along that road of you know, we're here where we're at and we want to be over in the distance there and we've got to spend that money and we've got to invest in ourselves. We've got to take the time to get to that place in the horizon that we want to be. So I want you to try and sort of reframe the way that you're spending money um, or the reasons why you're spending money. You're not, I'm not saying go off and you know, invest in everything that's out there, you know, of course, be selective, but don't feel guilty about it. If you find the thing that you know is right for you and you have the means to be able to pay for it without putting yourself in the, is it the black or the red? I can't remember now, without putting yourself in debt anyway, then don't feel guilty about it. Why should you not aspire for your dreams? If you think about other people in your life who will spend vast amounts of money on golf clubs and bags and the golfing kit. I think about my husband, who is not, he's not a golfer, but he's always been active and sporty. And the amount of kit that comes with just jogging, (laughs) the amount of kit that comes with having all the right uh, gear to jog in all weathers, and being in Scotland, we need that. So if it's going to get sunny one minute and then raining five minutes later, you've got to have the right kit. Cycling, you then took up cycling. Not only did you have to buy a bike, but you've got to buy all the kit that goes with cycling because you can't wear the jogging 
kit, apparently. You have to have special cycling kit. You can't just wear trainers, it seems. You've got to have special cycling shoes. Um, now he loves gardening, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, the gardens never looked better. But again, who knew there were so many plants that could be purchased? Who knew there was so much kit that goes along with... Um, uh, that goes along with gardening. If I think about myself and sewing, you know, it's not just the sewing machine, but there's all the threads, the materials, the patterns, the whole kit that goes along with that as well. And it's the same for our writing. It's not just about, um, you know, a pen and paper or a laptop. There is stuff that goes around it to help us be better, to help make the writing easier and to give us what we need and help us get to where we want to go ultimately that's the biggest thing. So I want you to stop feeling guilty about it. If it's within your means and it's something that speaks to you and resonates with you, go for it. Go for it. You will not regret it. It will be something that you will get so much out of and you will see yourself growing as that individual and as that writer. All right, so three ways that we feel guilty and I hope I've given you some ways of reframing that so the first one is the the guilt around taking time away from our loved ones that is so important getting respite from 24-hour care of somebody or multiple people we need that break oh my goodness we need that break in order to kind of get a bit refreshed gather our sanity together whew, so we can come back and uh, be our best for the people that we are looking after so don't feel guilty about needing that time away um, the second way we can feel guilty is that we don't think we're talented or creative enough and we think that it's boastful to strive for something out with the norm. I want you to change that way of thinking and know that your creative journey is exactly that. It's There's a road there and you are going to walk that road in your own time and it's not boastful to strive for something out with the norm. It is courageous and if you do it, you'll be setting a precedent for the people who come after you. So you your children or your grandchildren they will get to see you and what you're doing and what you're aiming for and you're showing them that it is possible for them to do it if at their young age as you as it is for you to do it at your older age so um it's it's a, so worthwhile doing and then um the guilt around spending money on a course or a retreat but you, maybe you've not finished the novel yet you've not got the deal and you feel you know how can i how can i justify that um you justify that by saying money is comes and goes. It's not a finite resource. There's always more available somewhere in the universe and you are deserving just by dint of wanting to do it. If you if it was somebody else who wanted to do this, you'd say go for it. If it was a somebody who wanted new golf clubs, who wanted a new bicycle, who whatever it is, you'd be encouraging them to go ahead and do it if it makes them happy, even though there is a cost associated with it. If spending money on a course or a weekend or a retreat, or whatever it might be, feels right for you, if it speaks to you, know that there is nothing wrong with that. You are allowed to do that and the money will come again. Don't you worry. It's just helping you, investing in you and letting you become that person that you ultimately want to be. And, uh, and that is to be a writer and hopefully a published writer. All right, that is me for today. Um, if you want to know more about me and how I can help you to on that road to getting to where you want to be, then head on over to my website, emmadesi.com and there's some free resources over there. You'll also find a little bit more about how you can work with me. And if you get onto my mailing list, then of course, I'll be letting you know about any events and trainings that I'm hosting and which you are more than welcome to attend. But I will leave it there for today. Happy writing and I'll see you next time.